Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with Todd Wagner. How you doing, Todd? I'm well, Rick. Hello, friends. Great. Well, today we're talking about near-death experiences. Are they real? Do people die and go to heaven and come back? Okay, well, you threw it another way to say it in there. Are, real, are near-death experiences real? I mean, I think there are people who nearly die all the time. Now, the question is, are some of the accounts that we have reliable? Um, and should we base our hope on the stories that we're hearing from people who have what we're calling an NDE, a near-death experience. Um, listen, one of the things I always want to say, let me just start with a position of humility, okay? Whenever somebody comes to me and tells me something that they experienced, you know, I, I, I would just tell you, listen, I'm not going to argue with your experience. I mean, who am I to argue with what you personally experienced? But I will discuss with you what you're going to make of that experience and what you think I should make of it and what others should make of it. Um, here's the concerning thing, and that is that people who are seriously minded biblical Christians would um, find more confidence in our eternal home through the sad experience of a six-year-old boy uh, like Alex Malarkey, I think Kevin's the father, um, or Todd Burpa, who was a pastor, and his son, uh, who I think had an NDE when he was four years old, or anybody else, it doesn't really matter. There's all kinds of people who have had near-death experiences. There is one near-death experience, by the way, in the Bible, and I will read to you from that in just a moment. Um, but here's what I want to share with you. Uh, let's just go to one of the more famous ones. This became quite the um, rage in publishing circles um, in the early 2000s, and things like this have a tendency to make their way around because they're you know, rather spectacular uh, when you hear about them. When somebody can tell you things that we can't otherwise know, you want to pay attention to that. That's why you should pay attention to your Bible. It is what is called revelation, and it is um, revelation from God, not from human experience. And so this is the book that you want to go to if you want to find out about uh, what happens after death. That's what makes the Bible so precious. It shows us things we otherwise can't know unless God pulls back the veil and reveals to us what cannot be seen. Things that eye hasn't seen, things that ear hasn't heard, things which have never entered into the heart of men. All these have been clearly seen, it says in 2 Corinthians, okay, um, by those of us who are spiritually appraised. Man, what a gift. That's why this is the book you want to read. Let me quote my friends um, at the uh, Southern Baptist Convention, who about six months before, we got some insight from the Malarkey family about the story, the boy who came back from heaven, um, made this statement, and it was a wise statement. They said this, the sufficiency of biblical revelation over the subjective experiential explanation to guide one understanding of the truth about heaven and hell is what should be emphasized. I could not agree more, okay? You want this book to be your authority. Now listen, my, my friend John Burke, uh, who's a pastor in Austin, Texas, wrote a book called Imagine Heaven, where he does his best to look at all kinds of near-death experiences and show how they kind of line up with biblical revelation. And what I would just say is they might, and as much as they do, they may be useful, but I don't need the experiences of people who potentially uh, in a hallucinogenic state or who, um, frankly, are just trying to patch together things they think they remember and what would be a near-death experience can do to give valid validation to my faith. Okay, um, you know, we, we have faith, which is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And I don't need somebody else to tell me something or see something to make me have great confidence. Um, this is what uh, the young man said, um, you know, Alex Malarkey, who is the star of the book, The Boy Who Came Back From Heaven. He said this in January of 2015, I did not die. I did not go to heaven. I said I went to heaven because I thought it would get me attention. When I made the claims that I did, I had never read the Bible. People have profited from lies, and they continue to. They should read the Bible, which is enough. The Bible is the only source of truth. Anything written by men cannot be infallible. Those are some wise words. I don't care how old you are or what kind of near-death experience you've had. So our near-death experience is real. I'm not going to argue with somebody's experience, but I will argue with what they make of it. Let me give you one near-death experience. And there's some insight here that I think is application for you as you read books like Heaven is for Real and The Boy Who Came Back from Heaven. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. There's a guy named Paul who we know had an event in his life where they thought he was dead and he came back. This is what he says, okay? So this is from the scripture. He said, uh, hey, listen, boasting is going to be necessary here because he's going to say, I'm going to tell you some things 
um, that are that are going to help you know a little bit about my apostleship. And what Paul's saying is, uh, I'm suffering for the gospel, even to the point of death. He said, I'm, he's, it's going to be maybe necessary for you to believe me, but he said it's not ultimately profitable. But I'm going to go on, he says, and, uh, and tell you the visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man, he says as humbly as he can, talking about himself in Christ, who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or out of the body I do not know, God knows such a man was caught up to the third heaven. Now the question is, what's the third heaven? That's another real truth real quick we should do. And I know how such a man, uh, whether in body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words. And you're like, what did he say? This is the next thing that Paul says, which a man is not permitted to speak. So all I would tell you is this is a book. If you want to learn about heaven, read this. This is all you need to know. You don't need to die to know that we've got a blessed hope, which is going to be uh, us being in the presence of God, our sins dealt with if by grace through faith. We put our confidence in God's provision, and we're going to be with him. There will be no longer tear. There will no longer be any night. And uh, we will go to work for all eternity without sin affecting our work to the glory of God and enjoying one another. So um, I don't think everybody who uh, shares their near-death experience story is trying to exploit people and make a profit, but I will tell you, reading those books won't profit you near as much as reading this one. Thanks, Todd. Well, listen, just like Todd said, our hope is not in another person's story, but in the hope of God's Word, and we hope that you're reading it. If you have any questions about God's Word, you can send that to us right there at the email below, and we'll see you next week on another episode. Thank you.